Hello there, Bradley from Big Red TV here, and I've just finished a monster shoulder headphones out. What am I doing? Professional YouTube. <laughs> I've just finished a monster shoulder workout. Feeling good, feeling pumped up, and I just wanted to share some little tips with you. Not like my, my training plans, my exercise, but um, it's just little things that I sort of do, little advice that I followed, and it's really helped me. Say so, number one, water. Drink water before, during, and after a workout. I used to, when I first started, I thought, oh, I'm not gonna have any water, I'll save it to the end, it's a treat. Well, that was dumb. Little sips throughout the workout, keep yourself hydrated. Sugary drinks, like those Lucas Aid sport ones, I think if you're doing a marathon, they're useful, but it'll take like, I think, is it two hours or something for the sugar to get into your body? So if you think that you're sort of drinking that sugar during the workout and that's gonna give you fuel, well, no, by the time it gets into your muscles, it's going to be by the time your workout's done. I guess if you thought that there's going to be sugar to repair it, but to repair your muscles afterwards, but no, don't have those sugary drinks during the workout thinking that's going to give you energy for that workout you're doing. Unless you're running a marathon, you're going for like three hours. And then on that same train of thought, fizzy drinks. Don't have any fizzy drinks, energy drinks during your workout. Your body has already got like an oxygen deficit and it's trying to pump more oxygen around your body and you're filling it with bubbles of carbon dioxide and you're gonna make yourself gassy, you'll be burping, you're like, it's just not good. And again, the sugar is not gonna be going into your muscles till after your workout's finished. So just water, lots of water. And that ties into the next point now, the oxygen deficit, breathe. Don't sort of try and hold it. Now I'm guilty of this. We all get thrown into a workout and get in the mood and sometimes it goes off. But as long as you're aware that breathing is important and also that the actual taking a deep breath, it will make you think and be present and you can control the weight and the motion you're doing because you're breathing in on like the sort of, what is it, the, you come and bring in the weight down and then you breathe out when you push the weight. That's it. So when you exert yourself, breathe out and then as you're pulling it down slowly, breathe in. So really, go slowly, take some deep breaths. Not all the time, but if you're, you're not sure what you're doing and you're starting out, take your breathing into consideration. So we've got water, breathe in. Number three, I'm gonna say is flexing and say stretching between sets. Now I'm not saying pose and going up to the mirror looking at yourself and doing all this, unless you're a bodybuilder and you've got a pose or you're a dancer and you're doing things, whatever, you do yours in the gym. But what I'm saying by flexing between sets, even if you're not, say, training that particular muscle group, I will stretch out, I'll do my arms, I'll put a bit of resistance on my bicep, and I will stretch my biceps out, and I'll do it sort of hammer curl with my hand straight, then I'll twist it and do it like that. And I'll do both arms, and I'll be doing that all between my biceps ones and different exercises as well. And then if I'm doing triceps, I'll put resistance there, and I'll push down. And again, I'll do it with my hands straight and like that. And I'll do both hands and I'll do a few of those between the sets to really fill the muscle with blood. Another good tricep one, I'll just do this. Then I can, even now, I can feel that in my triceps and I'll be doing that between sets. If I'm doing lat pull downs, between my sets of lat pull downs, I'll do some of these. So I know it's bent over rear delts, but then I'll add in just some of that. Really, just between sets. Wow, it started chucking it down. I'm in, I'm in the jungle at the moment and it's chucking it down. I'll show you that at the end. Yeah, just stretch out your muscles and chest as well. Push like this. And that's a good one for your arms and your wrists. And again, wrists. Really fill all your extremities with blood because it's blood that gets all the nutrients around your body. It's going to help you have a good workout. Number four, adding a weak point body part exercise at the end of every workout. But for me, a big one, genetically, I've always had a bizarrely peaked biceps. Like, I don't have that lower third. For some reason on me, I've got peaked biceps. I love being Bradley, that's fine. Sometimes, depends what side of the bed I wake up on in the morning. But I started, a couple of years ago, at the end of every workout, putting in cable bicep curls. At the end of it, if it was chest and tri, shoulders, back, by whatever, I would always add in five sets of 12, as heavy as I could, doing it in a controlled manner, of either preacher curls or cable curls, to really stretch out that lower third. 
And even though, of course, it doesn't go all the way to my elbow now, I really added some size on my biceps by adding that at the end of every workout. And I really think that helped me, even just a mental thing, it helped me overcome the thought that I wasn't, I wasn't training that muscle, I wasn't getting the results I wanted. I think at the moment I'm sort of umming and ahhing, I'm doing biceps at the end of every workout, or I'm doing press-ups to exhaustion. Morning! <laughs> I've finished, I'll just do a little YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> temperature? Oh, I'm fine. I just worked through it. Yeah, I'm, I'm dripping, but it's good. Yeah. Good for me. Right. Thank you. Yeah, okay, I thought of a couple. Let's do number five. Going to be don't train angry. Do not train angry. Don't come to the gym if you're in a bad mood or you feel like you want to have a fight or you're feeling anything like that and think, oh yeah, I'll take out my frustrations on myself. From my experience, you're gonna hurt yourself, you're gonna injure yourself. There are two times in my life where I can actually remember, I can't remember what it was, I think it was like a housemate or something, it was at uni, and I was just fuming. And I just packed my stuff up, went to the gym and thought, oh, I'm gonna have the best workout ever, I'm so angry. Loaded up the weight on the shoulder press, literally first couple of reps, I, I don't know what it's called, cracked my neck, did something, and I couldn't move my head. For weeks, literally a couple of weeks, my, Head, it was in agony. To t I kept trying to move it because that's like the, I think the best thing to do with certain injuries is not just stagnate, you've got to move it. Don't quote me on that for whatever it is. I don't know what I did, it went away without going to a doctor, but it was stupid and I was in agony for weeks. So don't train angry, leave your baggage at the door. Now it can be good. I think if you're down or stressed, the gym, as so long as you can leave that baggage at the door, working out is the best thing for you. But if you can't detach from some sort of angry, pent up emotion, don't train, okay? Go for a walk, have a chocolate bar, speak to a friend, don't go to the gym and think you're gonna go bonkers. I guess if you're going swimming, you could do that, but I'm talking about weightlifting. Don't go to the gym and think that anger's gonna make you 10 times stronger. Recipe for disaster. So don't train angry. And number six, while I'm a huge fan of, I don't know if you've seen any of me Instagramming live some of my workouts, I'll walk to the gym with sort of wrestling theme songs playing, Hulk Hogan, John Cena, Kurt Angle, Shane McMahon, and then even when I do my sort of warm-ups and first exercises, I'll have them on. Then I sort of go into the Rocky soundtrack, and then it moves on to some Kanye West, P. Diddy, DMX, and then it goes on to Rob Zombie, and then Ramstein. Ramstein is my ultimate gym music. So what I would say, find music I, that you like, that encourages you and keeps you going. This point is about don't rely on that music. One of the songs I listen to is called Victory. I think it's P. Diddy and some other, like, some other guys. It's like a remix. And there's a lyric in that. Don't, oh, now I've forgotten it. Don't make an Arse out yourself by assuming my music keeps you moving. Don't you know that I'm two levels above you, baby? Hug me, baby. I want to make you love me, baby. That's it. But the main part of that is don't make an arse out of yourself by assuming my music keeps you moving. And it's, it's good because the song does get me going and so does all the other music I listen to. But if my headphones break or my MP3 player runs out of battery or I leave it at home, that's the point. I've got an MP3 player. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. It's ancient, cost me 20 pounds. I've had it for like four or five years. Philips Go Gear. I mean, I, I tried buying another one, or another few actually, just to have them in case it broke. Four gigabytes of songs. Um, I love it, so that's me ranting now. So, MP3 player, got my music that I like, but if it was to fail, I've got to know that it's Bradley that keeps me moving. But enjoy the music, but it's you that keeps you going. And so, number seven, I had it. It's gone. Fancy gym kit, you don't need it. If you want it and you want to save up money, spend your money, enjoy yourself, but you don't need it. I think it's because my family sort of fitnessy background thingy that I sort of learned and heard from them, like seriously hardcore workouts and stuff, they had like a gym kit and they just hang it up. Work out, hang it up, come back to the next day, pick it up, use it. Um, some of the stories I've heard, like hardcore training, like you blow your nose on your kit, doesn't matter, I think that's quite, that's quite extreme. 
one guy, I think was doing bicep curls, the story uh, my uncle told me, doing bicep curls and just put the bicep thing down, threw up onto his top and sort of smeared it in and then just carried on. Like, but this was like old school, Arnie era, mental, the most hardcore people and training you can get to. So I'm not maybe at that level, but in this day and age where it's all 70 quid for something with a lightning bolt on it's going to make you run faster. Like the Flash, love the Flash. I haven't actually watched the TV series, but I love the comic books. This top I think was about £2.50. The shorts I'm wearing were £4. I've had these now maybe close to a year and they're fine, there's no holes in them. The shoes I got, they were 20 quid in the sale. The thing is, Under Armour shoes, that's, well, that's like I've heard of that brand. And I've had them for a good few months. As soon as they start smelling, I'll bin them. Like, yeah, so don't think you need fancy gym kit, but if you've got the money, if you save up, if you want it, for me sometimes, if I get, say, a protein powder or some bars or something, if I buy it in bulk, it's like a good motivation. I think, right, I've spent that money, it's an investment, I want to do it. So that can be a good side of that. If you're investing money in something, have a good time with it, but say you don't need it. Right, I've rambled on there for almost 15 minutes. I've got to have a I've just had a workout, I need to eat food. I'm wasting away here. God, I'm all pent up as well. I had black coffee before the gym. I think I put two things in it, so it's like a double black coffee. And I'm hyping up as it is. So, B Rad Bradley's gym tip bit advice, top tips, tips from the top. Let's see, I can remember them all now. Drink water, breathe. Flex and stretch between sets. Add weak points at the end, add weak point training at the end of every exercise. Don't train angry. Find music that you enjoy, but then don't rely on it. It's you that does it. And then number seven, you don't need fancy kit to make yourself strong and fit and have a good old workout. There we go. Seven little bits of advice. Um, if you want the real advice, I guess you guys have already seen it. I've got my B Rad Bedroom Body Book that I wrote everything I know in there about my home workouts and nutrition plans. So if you want to know the foundation of everything I have, it's in that if you want to look at it. Merry Christmas. Look after yourselves. Drink some water. Don't get bogged down with it all. Enjoy the gym and enjoy your Christmas. Eat some food. Have a drink. Merry Christmas. Bye 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 and be rad.